Um, and what I mean by a living price is, is, is it going to cover that survival income that you need? Or are they going to give you 50 quid a week, um, which might just about cover your Oyster card bill? And can you take it up, up so you can make a whole wage from it? Um, and this is probably the most difficult question for any of you. The, the burning idea that you have, the thing that you love to do, um, is it actually something that will sell or do you need to adapt it? And this is where quite a lot of people have, have, have played off with the ideas that what they like to do is not necessarily what they can make a lot of money doing. So sometimes you have to either decide you're going to do um, something for love or something for money, or sometimes you have to sort of adapt the thing you're doing in the middle to actually make it different. Okay. So, um, do you know what I mean by supply chain? Let me just take, take you through a little bit about supply chain, because fundamentally this is actually, I'm just going to take you through a little bit about how to find your customer. Um, the reason being, um, all the rest of the support you can get from Catherine, so I've cut most of my stuff out and I'm actually just going to take you through supply chain. So what I'm trying to say is, is, who is your customer and whereabouts is what you're developing actually going to be sold? Um, are you selling um, something to a TV producer, for example, or are you actually selling it to the people who are watching the TV? Um, are you, if you were, I, I did quite a lot of work with textile designers down at Winchester School of Art. Are you selling a design to um, the people who are making the fabrics to make the scarves for Liberty, or are you selling the scarves to Liberty, having made the scarf yourself? Okay, so here's you in the middle. I've just taken a, forgive me if I got the words wrong, because as I said, I'm a medievalist by nature, by training. Here's you in the middle. Okay, and if you could be selling um, stuff directly to a broadcaster. Okay, so that may be where you think your actual end customer is going to be. Are you going to be freelance? Or are you going to be employed by them? Question number one. It's sometimes a good idea to go and get a job with a big company for the first couple of years to understand how it works and how their processes work. Are you going to make your own productions and then sell them to the broadcaster? If so, are you going to run your own company? Or are you going to go and pitch your ideas to someone else's? Are you going to have to employ other people? And are you then going to get those productions into the broadcaster some way? So how are you actually going to get your ideas up to where your customer may be. And is this actually your customer? Is it an independent TV company that you're selling things to? Or indeed, is it another different, different kind of digital company who is actually going to put things behind it? So do you see what I mean about the fact that you're identifying who you're selling to? Each the time, your piece of art or your, your product, your, your, um, your own piece of work, may be different depending on where you're going to go to. Equally, um, and there's juice on the end there. <clears throat> you might have um, something which is going to actually sell to web applications. Again, equally, you may be freelance or employed, um, and you could be selling it to the end customer or for the web design to a web design company who are selling to a, an end customer. What I'm trying to take you through here is the basis of you've got to work out which one of these guys you're going to sell to. If you don't feel that you're comfortable standing up in front of a, um, a commissioning editor in the BBC, then you need to think of, think of somewhere else or go and work with someone else who can. Okay. <clears throat> and then the other thing is, is where do you sit? If you're selling to an independent TV company, there's a number of other different people involved. Um, and they may then sell to the broadcaster directly. Um, or you may do. So what I've ringed here is the fact that, again, these are the customers that you might be aiming at. So what I'm trying to say again is once you've got an idea of your product, work out who you're going to try and sell it to and then find out how you're going to get it there. Okay. Um, just moving on to a couple of other things. Um, when you're freelancing or when you are standing up your own co setting up your own company, you are your brand. Um, the only thing that anyone's going to know about, about what you're doing is through you. Okay. So make sure that all of your materials are very professionally produced. Um, one of the things that you really do need to do is go and get, I mean, you can produce your own graphic design, which is excellent, which is something I can't do. Um, but you go and get professional-looking um, business cards, professional-looking letterheads. Um, and take time and money for the presentation. Unfortunately, it's going to cost a little bit of money up front um, in order at least to print things out. Um, 
and think about how you are putting yourself across, again, to that end user, that end customer that you're thinking about, as well as how you're writing. If you need help with writing, get some help. If you need, writing, if you need help with um, presenting yourself, get some help. Because fundamentally, other people will be able to tell you more about how you come across than necessarily you will, or even your best friend will. Um, one um, good advice someone gave me was uh, go and find an aunt or an uncle, because they're likely to be sort of less soft on you than your parents are. Okay. And the other thing is, is if you need to support yourself by getting some money, then um, have you got enough time to think about your practice? If you're working nine to five, five days a week, or nine to five, six days a week, then um, you may not actually have the time to, f to the freedom to get your, your ideas um, gelling in your head. So sometimes you might be better off stacking shelves in Tesco because you've got all of that time, really, to think about what you're actually going to be doing yourself, rather than necessarily working um, for something which is going to use your brain. However, um, if you are going to work um, with something that's going to use your brain, try and find a job that's going to help you get to that end point that you want to. So find a job with a company that you want to sell to in the end, or find a job um, with someone that's going to help you support the parts of your business that you don't know how to do yourselves. Um, there's a whole load of links in here. ACID is the, um, the intellectual property guys at the top. Um, IPO.gov.uk is actually the patent office. This is the, um, the UK patent office. It says an awful lot about design rights and registered design rights and things like that. Um, if you're interested in IP, then there's, um, I think ECHO are running an IP event in a couple of weeks' time, so go along and find that out. Um, this smallbusinessadvice.org.uk website is very, very good. It's got all the basic stuff about setting up businesses. You know, do you want to be a sole trader? Do you want to be a limited company? Do you want all of those bits and pieces? There's templates for writing business plans. Um, there is a template for a survival income spreadsheet, um, which you can put in there. I would go onto that and have a look because it's got very. If you, if you use their templates, you're not going to go wrong, basically. Um, Business Link has got a whole load of advice, again, um, probably more so about um, when you're starting to employ people um, and the legal sides of actually your business, rather than if you're working as a sole trader, but um, um, the, the, there are a few gems in there. Um, GLE.co.uk are the company that do all the business startup programs in this part of London. So, um, again, ECHO will probably send you in that direction, but if you want to go outside um, the university sector, then GLE do, um, they probably do um, six three-hour sessions to take you through all the standard things, like one of them will be about tax, one of them will be about bookkeeping, one will be about business planning, one will be about markets, that sort of stuff. Um, Flying Start is the National Centre for Graduate Entrepreneurship's um, Enterprise Programme. That's the ECHO website, the OWNIT website. And then there's another one here, um, creativelondon.org.uk, which is actually a really good website for anyone that's running a creative business. If you're an arts practitioner or a creative um, business, then Creative London is a good one. Okay, just to leave you with these some thoughts. This is something, I come from cows and, and um, sail a lot, and this is something that Robin Knox Johnson, who just sailed around the world for the second time on his own uh, at the age of 69, um, said when he came back. When he was asked um, whether he would recommend anyone to do it, he said, just do it, because once you've decided that you're gonna do something, then you're 80% of the way there. And then he went on to say, you've got to live your life in bright colours, which I think is one of the greatest quotes I've seen. And he also said, because we're not sure we're going to get another one, but live your life in bright colours and go for it. Thank you very much.